Welcome to TIA's Connectivity Jam, where we have the pleasure of speaking with leaders in our industry on key topics that drive businesses. Joining on this segment of TIA Now is Scott Armel, Vice President and General Manager, DC Power and Outside Plant Products, Vertiv. Welcome, Scott. Thank you. Tell us how Vertiv specializes in the critical infrastructure layer of the network. Vertiv specializes in the critical infrastructure network with um, critical products around AC power UPSs, DC power systems, outside plant products, um, and then data center infrastructure such as um, racks, um, in-row cooling equipment, KVM switches, software, and DCIM solutions. Um, you probably know many of the brand names associated with Vertiv, um, Liebert, ASCO, NetSure, Chloride, and Trellis. You probably know us as formerly as Emerson Network Power. Um, in December of this past year, we actually spun out and were taken private. And during that transaction, we rebranded as Vertif. What are some of the considerations and challenges for network transformation at the base support infrastructure level? I think first that just the scale of the existing infrastructure in the telecom network is pretty staggering. You think of the number of cell sites, the decades of investment in infrastructure around wireline networks, wireless networks, and where we are today. Um, every time there's a new technology cycle or a new um, revolution in what we're trying to do in telecom, it's not feasible to rip and replace everything that we have out there. So I think trying to balance using what we have versus investing in where we want to take technologies is one major consideration. Another major consideration is as the world of telecom and data centers and, and IT management meld together and come together with media, um, it creates a lot of different infrastructure opportunities and challenges in that the world of AC power and DC power are coming together. We're seeing traditional telecom giants having to deploy standard servers and storage into traditional telecom central offices. It creates a, a people and a skill set problem. It creates an infrastructure challenge. And quite frankly, it's as an industry, how do we wrap our heads around what are some of the solutions and where, where can we take this to make sure that the infrastructure and technology that we know we need for LTE, LTE advanced 5G, Internet of Things, network functions virtualization is enabled by the infrastructure while still leveraging all of the investments and all of the spend we've made in the past. What are some of the solutions for network transformation at the base support infrastructure level? So what we're doing at Vertiv is we have a very solid portfolio of, of base solution products in AC power, three phase and single phase UPSs, in thermal management, in row cooling, um, room level cooling, as well as uh, large air handlers and things for large mega data centers. Um, we have point solutions in IT racks and power distribution, software and, uh, and management tools. Uh, we have a lot of those point solutions. What we're focusing on now is how do we help enable the transition of this network transformation by bringing all of those pieces together and bundling them into solutions, trying to take some of the thought out of it for our customers and end users by, hey, we're the experts on these products. Let's figure out the best way to bundle a power system with a rack, with batteries, with cooling, have it be a pre-engineered type of a modular solution and work with our customers to deploy repeatable, fast solutions leveraging all of the products we have in our portfolio, um, really to help ease the burden on some of the expertise. So we have the benefit of leveraging a bunch of point product and point solutions uh, that we've had great success with in the marketplace. And now the challenge for us is really bringing all of those together into easily deployable, rapidly deployable, intelligent solutions that our customers can drop in place that provide really solid infrastructure solutions, better visibility to their equipment, um, and really takes a lot of the heart heartburn and stress and strain out of uh, deploying new equipment in unfamiliar places for our customers. As traditional telecom central offices and data centers continue to merge, what is the impact on critical infrastructures? As we continue to kind of reimagine a, a traditional telecom central office as a data center, um, there's a lot of impacts both on the equipment that gets deployed into these facilities as well as um, the base infrastructure that is actually able to support that equipment. So you picture an old 60-year-old telecom central office with a concrete floor, um, power room in the basement, a big room for batteries. Now all of a sudden we're trying to deploy multiple racks of high-density servers to support um, TV shows, media, on-demand programming. Uh, that facility wasn't really designed to take this, uh, this new type of data center equipment. So um, one of the things we're working on with a lot of our customers and a lot of our partners is how do we deploy some solutions that take some of the take some of those challenges off of our operator's plate? For example, um, we have a telecom industry that's traditionally deployed 48 volt DC power. Uh, we can leverage a lot of that 48 volt DC power for this new equipment where we can't. 
Um, now all of a sudden we're talking about deploying AC power UPSs, three phase UPSs into a traditional telecom environment. That creates challenges around municipalities, regulations, NEC codes, those types of things. Um, now all of a sudden fire suppression is, is an issue um, in deploying some of this equipment. S just things telecom operators haven't really had to think about or haven't really had to consider in their central office environments. Some of the things we're doing at Vertiv are bringing together smart solutions where we're self-containing a lot of our equipment. So you pair an AC power UPS or a DC power system into an enclosed cabinet or rack with IT equipment, with in-row cooling, um, you contain it and wrap some fire suppression around it and all of a sudden I've got a self-contained unit that I can deploy into a central office and it takes a lot of, uh, it takes a lot of the heartburn quite frankly off of our operator's plate because now I don't need it inspected. I don't need to have outside regulatory agencies come in uh, and truly evaluate it. I've got something that's pre-engineered, factory configured, we can drop it in place and I know that the infrastructure is going to be able to support the, uh, the type of equipment we're trying to deploy because it was designed specifically to do that. What is the importance of powering and backing up critical applications and content at the edge of the network? I think when you think about content starting to migrate out to the edge, be that cell towers or points of presence or re retail locations or anything along those lines, uh, we're seeing a, a drive towards server compute power and capacity getting closer and closer to the end user. Um, when you kind of peel that back to say, how do we need to power and back up these types of things? It's really about the criticality of that application. So if it's a TV show, be it Game of Thrones, that we're trying to get closer to an end user to reduce latency, um, maybe we're trying to put traditional data center servers and storage out at a cell site or at a pop location. Um, where we think about that is we have some tools and, and products in our portfolio to help environmentally protect that, cool that, power that type of equipment that maybe traditionally hadn't been deployed out in the outside plant side of the network. Um, you can you contrast that with things that are going on in retail and kind of points of presence tools and, and retail shopping enriching experiences and now all of a sudden we've got solutions where hey maybe the, the back of a retail store becomes more like a data center. As you think about these types of applications and the use cases at Vertiv we're thinking about which of these applications truly need to be powered up and backed up? Where do we need extended runtime on batteries? What type of power system provides us with the right level of resiliency and redundancy for these networks? And we're working with operators and our customers to, to help make those determination, determinations to one, make sure that the power and the backup is aligned to the proper application, and two, that we have some base infrastructure and tools in place to enable some growth and expansion and things like that where we deploy one time and we're not necessarily locked into the given size of the infrastructure. We've got some future proofing of, of what we have at that location and on that site. Thank you for being with us today, Scott. It's absolutely my pleasure.